Hello everyone. On behalf of Development Aid, I welcome you to today's webinar on doing business with Asian Development Bank, procurement guidelines and best practices. My name is Yon and I'll be moderating this event. Please let me know if you can hear me well. Before we start, I would like to touch upon some technical details related to our broadcast. Your cameras and microphones are automatically muted, so any questions or comments that may arise along the way can be submitted via the question section on your screen. We highly encourage active participation in our discussions. All participants that stay until the end of the event will receive a certificate of attendance. Note also that we've planned several polls during this event, so please don't hesitate to participate as your opinion matters to us. The first poll will be visible on your screen in a few moments. Today's discussion is one in a series of webinars organized by Development Aid in which we touch on various topics related to the international development sector. Some of the webinars previously held in the settings refer to how to do business with USAID, how to uh, bid for projects funded by African Development Bank, or how to write successful technical proposals. We hope that you have enjoyed attending our previous events, but if you haven't had the chance, it will be my pleasure to show with you the links to the archive versions of those events. I'm happy to see that at this point, we already have 140 people who joined us, and we're looking forward for more people to join in the uh, next few minutes. Uh, at this point, we have also the results from the first poll in, which I will share with you in a few moments. So as you can observe in the screen, um, the highest part of our attendees, about 60% come from Europe. We have 28% uh, coming from Asia, another 7% come from Africa and from North America. We're happy to see such a diverse crowd joining us for, for our events. If for any reason your screen lags behind, or you have issues following this broadcast, try to exit and log in again. Without further delay, I would like to introduce our speaker for today's event. Stefan Besadi is the Senior Procurement Specialist with Asian Development Bank. Stefan joined ADB in 2017 and is currently leading and supporting a portfolio of $800 million of sovereign and non-sovereign infrastructure projects within procurement, portfolio, and financial department. Moreover, Stefan is also responsible for preparing strategic procurement plans for quality of infrastructures, operational capacities, digital, and high-level technology. Welcome, Stefan. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Yon. Uh, it's my pleasure also. Uh, thank you for your very good uh, organization for this event. Uh, I'm very impressed uh, to see uh, your, your large network and the, the large audience uh, we, we have today. So on behalf of uh, ADB, uh, it's really a, a pleasure to share with you today um, uh, how to better uh, work and, uh, and cooperate with us. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, before we move to the presentation itself, I have a, uh, a question that I want to ask you. So I was wondering, um, so I have noticed that most of your career you have been working in the private sector and uh, specifically in water operations and i'm wondering what made you move to the development sector thank you Yun. um yeah it's a good question uh, indeed i spent as you say there uh, about 20 uh, 20 years uh, working in different countries uh, as india uh, africa uh, asia uh, like uh, indonesia for example where, where, where i spent some time um, so it, be, it became um, like a, a natural um, idea uh, three, four years ago to say, okay, at this stage of my career, uh, how can I get more influence? How can I get uh, also to know uh, different people, different stakeholders uh, who are also acting to, uh, to improve uh, the infrastructure and uh, related services um, in developing countries? So that's how I, I was very uh, much attracted by ADB because you will see it's a very very large uh, very large player in in Asia, 
Um, and yeah, I take also this opportunity uh, to remind that uh, uh, it's an organization with very uh, mixed background. Uh, and so you have uh, quite a significant number of people like me uh, who are coming from a, um, a private sector background. So I may say that a few, few years ago, I was exactly in the, in the same situation uh, as you are uh, in, in the audience, meaning uh, uh, being uh, working for a private organization and applying and bidding for, for projects and opportunities. Thank you, Stefan. So the general idea is never too late to consider moving to the development sector. Exactly. <laughs> no, more and more and more it will be here. Uh, with uh, the ambitious targets that are coming, uh, more and more uh, we, are, we are looking to attract also uh, new talents from everywhere. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, so while Stefan was kindly answering my question, we have the second poll running. At this point, we have the results in, uh, which you can also see on your screen. As you can observe, uh, the by far the largest part of our attendees represent consulting organizations over 76 percent we have 13 uh, percent which uh, represent supplier organizations another nine percent representing ngos and three percent representing academia and it seems like we don't have anyone at this point which represent construction field thank you so much for participating uh, as i mentioned before it's it's very interesting and very it's a pleasure to, for us to see such a diverse crowd joining us for for our events um I I think at this point we are ready to move to the presentation itself. Um, just one second. So Stefan, whenever you're ready, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Yun. Uh, I guess uh, everybody can see my, my screen. Um, so we prepared um, specially for de this development head session. Um, uh, content and material uh, related uh, to consulting opportunities, but I will address also um, other opportunities. I saw we have some suppliers and, and contractors uh, also in, in the audience. So um, I will present three main uh, chapters in the coming uh, 30 minutes. Um, first, what is uh, ADB and uh, its operation? Um, how do we operate uh, using a procurement framework? And finally, it's probably where I, I spend most of the time of the, of the session to be practical, uh, because I guess, I guess it's what you are the mo most interested with. Um, what are the ADB business opportunities and how to access it? So now let's speak uh, in, in the few minutes, com few coming minutes on ADB operations. So you may know uh, that ADB was founded in uh, 1966. So the headquarters uh, is in Manila, uh, in, the, in the Philippines. So now it's closed because of the, I mean, partially closed because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, but we are uh, operating uh, uh, almost as, as usual. Um, we have 68 members and 49 regional and 19 uh, non-regional members and 41 borrowing members. So it means that um, we have uh, really uh, uh, members uh, which are uh, in the same time uh, at the ADB board, but we, we, which are also uh, borrowing members. Uh, we have, for instance, uh, in the largest borrower, we have India, uh, we have China, we have Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Indonesia. Um, and we are using for uh, developing, uh, the implementing the, the, the project, we are using different types of financial instruments. So uh, loans, grants, technical assistance, equity and guarantees. Um, technical assistance, it means that we are able to develop an integrated project cycle. So to initiate uh, the project cycle, uh, with the money we are bringing uh, to the to the to the development developing member countries, it means that as you will see here after, we are not a traditional bank, but we are really a development bank uh, bringing financing support, but also knowledge. And it's where we really need uh, your contribution as consultant to bring this knowledge uh, to the project. 
so you may see that we have five main uh, geographic, uh, geographical areas, um, and the largest one is South Asia, representing about 33% of our engagement. Um, but Central Asia and Southeast Asia are also uh, uh, quite quite significant. And after we have East Asia and the Pacific, so where we have also an uh, important uh, operation, even if they are more reduced uh, in quantity, uh, we are very active in this, uh, in, this re in this region of the world. So the total uh, of our engagement is 102 uh, billion US dollars. Uh, and as we will see after, this amount uh, is constantly growing uh, year after year. So you may see on this slide uh, th that we have two main type of engagement. The first one is what we call sovereign. So it's really uh, the support, direct support to countries and governments. Uh, it's about, we have a commitment from about $28 billion or US dollar every year. Uh, and uh, you may see that well, we have some cancellation, some closure. So the net change is about $15 billion per year. Um, for non-sovereign, so it's a direct support to private uh, sector, private entities. Uh, so it's a little bit less, but it's growing. Uh, the target is to be about uh, at 30% of the total engagement uh, by 2030. So we are uh, end of 2020 at about uh, 15, 15 uh, billion dollars. So if you look at in our annual report, we may see uh, you may see that we are now reporting uh, according our strategy 2030, uh, according seven operational priorities. Uh, I will not describe it here, but it's really uh, thematic priorities that are uh, targeting to really address uh, a new strategy in terms of uh, uh, technology, in terms of social impact, to really bring transformative uh, actions. I will explain uh, how also in procurement we are accompanying this strategy with a more uh, flexible and revised framework. So regarding COVID, um, as you may know, we have been very active or very, uh, we have had two types of actions, I may say. First one, we have reoriented re uh, some financing. So in order to support directly our DMC countries, so we have uh, brought some technical assistance, so about 152 million of technical assistance. And we have brought also $20 billion of uh, let's say a package uh, to help to address the impact of the pandemic uh, that is uh, consisting of loans of also our budget support uh, in order to better help the countries to uh, restore their economy and also to develop their, their health sector for example. So we have also uh, developed or uh, contributed to develop the AppVax. So it's a direct support to our uh, vaccination program that is still ongoing now in, our, in the Philippines, for, for example, and, and in the other countries, uh, where we are really bringing in cooperation with World Bank, with uh, WHO, and with vaccination uh, program, uh, a direct support to, to the country's uh, vac vaccination rate. So you may see here um, the large amount of contract we are processing every year. Uh, and we are also um, uh, trying to improve the way to group some contract and to improve the, the administration. But it means that at the end of the year, uh, of the day, there are a lot of opportunities uh, to which you can, you can participate. We are also now separating uh, depending if it's a COVID or non-related to, to, to COVID support. And you may find this uh, separation also in our opportunities, uh, as I will explain uh, later. So uh, now we have a little bit set the ground and uh, you understand better what is the uh, ADB uh, large scope. Um, I would like to move to the ADB procurement framework. So, why uh, you may be more interested to, to pursue uh, ADB funded project and contracts. 
Uh, first, it's because the financing is, is guaranteed. It's uh, really uh, secured uh, by the type of uh, contractual arrangement we are having directly uh, with uh, the countries, uh, so which is uh, guaranteeing the, the, the loan we are, we, are, we are putting in place. And also uh, because, as we saw, it's a rapidly growing uh, organization with internationally uh, fair and accepted procurement procedure. So I will detail this a little bit more in the, in the coming slides. So um, we had recently introduced a new procurement framework so to introduce basically uh, more flexibility uh, in our project. So I invite you to look at it on, on, on our website, but it's basically now simplified to a policy and to regulation. Um, and we have removed a lot of uh, uh, previous uh, rigidity and thresholds that were that were included in the in the procurement guidelines at the time. So now we have uh, for you to to keep in mind we have uh, uh, added our two main uh, concepts, two main principles um, to the four initial ones. So we have added quality and value for money. So quality. Uh, means quality of the infrastructure, quality of the services, and value for money to get at an optimal price, not necessarily the lowest price, but at an optimal price, uh, what is uh, the most effective and efficient for the country. So we have a fit for purpose approach, as we will see uh, later, we are really insisting on that, so we are not developing all the project in the same way. And we focus on our uh, high quality of suppliers, low cost and strength and capacity for the uh, DMC procurement. So it's very important that we work on that in parallel. So as you know, to have a good procurement process, you need to bring uh, knowledge and capacity support to, to the developing countries. In terms of anti-corruption policy and guidelines, so also uh, we have very clear and transparent and tolerance zero uh, regarding integrity principle. Voila, now we have set the ground. Um, so I did not spend too much time on, on this part uh, in order to, to be practical, but I would like now to move more directly to the ADB business opportunities and how to access it. So um, to give you a, a flavor, uh, this you can find here, the ranking uh, in terms of good works um, and consulting services uh, regarding the, the highest uh, uh, numbers in terms of, of country uh, awards in the last four years. So this is an example of, of a country um, country uh, detail, for example, but you can find that on, on, a, on, a, on a lot of different countries. And you can also access uh, the ADB procurement dashboard. So it means you can really uh, have an overview of everything that is related uh, to your country of interest to, uh, to have a better understanding of how much uh, is the share of contracts um, for consulting services, for example, by country, uh, it's possible to, to, to know it. Now, uh, how you can participate to the, to the project. So as you may see here, um, you have the ADB project cycle and you have, so, main stage of this uh, project delivery where you can really uh, participate. So it's not only uh, at bidding stage that you can, uh, you can uh, start to, to look at the project, but it's really uh, from the start of the project. So when we start to discuss with the country, uh, we already need some individual consultant to help us to prepare uh, the cooperation strategy, to prepare uh, what will be uh, the concept of the project but also to prepare what will be at the end of the day, the procurement plan also of the project, so what we plan to procure. So um, we have feasibility studies, we have also technical assistance, and once the loan is approved and the project starts, we have also a lot of studies, uh, so detailed design, construction, supervision and monitoring, and you have to understand that we are not stopping only uh, at the project implementation, but we are really also focusing on the contract management phase. We are also hiring consultants for the evaluation phase. Uh, it's also an important part of the process where we uh, want to understand how to better uh, develop projects uh, for the next phase.
so in terms of type of opportunities, I saw we have, uh, we have suppliers today, for instance. Uh, we have consultants, so you may see here that it's uh, two, two, two large type of opportunities we get. And we have also civil works and non-consulting services as surveys, training, or event management. Um, for you to understand, uh, in the relationship uh, and roles uh, IDB is having, we don't necessarily have a contractual relation with the consultant because uh, the executing agency is most of the time handling this role. So we may have a specific TA uh, that we develop, and in this case, we select and we recruit the consultant, but in all the other cases, it will be the borrower. So it means we are just here to review the process and to ensure the process is going smoothly and as it was agreed when the, the project was prepared. So um, practically, uh, when you apply to, to a bid, you will see we are, we are using a kind of defined frameworks. Um, so for example, for um, international or for open competing bidding, not necessarily international, it can be national, we, have, we are developing a set of, uh, of bidding documents. We have also uh, developing new type of criteria. So it's very important to understand that we, it's not necessarily the lowest bidder which will get the project, but it can be um, using scoring method uh, in order, as I said before, to focus on the quality. We have also uh, introduced different type of uh, bidding documents to develop the infrastructure depending if we want the design to be included or not, uh, depending if we want also to have the operational phase included. So it's something we are looking very much at is also in the operation and maintenance phase, how to better operate the infrastructure. And we need also uh, the experience of, of consulting uh, and of, con of consultant uh, on that. And we have also a different set of guidance notes in order uh, to improve the quality of the bidding process. So I will, I will go quickly on that. You, you can find that uh, later in the presentation, but basically uh, when you submit a bid, uh, you want to avoid any administrative inconsistency. So it's very important to, uh, to very uh, carefully uh, review this and also uh, to disclose and to be as transparent as possible regarding potential conflict of interest um, or inclusion of financial offer with technical offer, for example, uh, if it's not required. So um, I would like to spend now a few, few minutes on the pr procurement of consultants that might be of, of interest um, for you. So you know, we, have, we are having three main types of, of consulting uh, opportunities. So first for firms, uh, after for consultants, and we are also hiring uh, what we call staff consultants. Uh, so it's a different type of financial instruments. And the process and the selection criteria may, may slightly differ. Uh, and also the eligib eligibility criteria uh, may slightly differ. Um, we may also hire international or national uh, expertise and depending uh, the eligibility uh, criteria, depending the type of financing, uh, can slightly uh, vary. Um, so depending if it's for individual consulting or firm uh, contract, also the nationality uh, criteria is slightly different, um, but we can maybe discuss later after on this if you have a specific question. Um, so regarding a, a firm recruitment, um, we have the steps that you, you may know uh, or not. So I will, I will remind them uh, also in this presentation. So first, we are uh, developing a term of reference. So that is very important to look careful at this document because you understand the project, you understand the context, you understand the need, but you have also to look at other documents that are available in our website, as I will explain after. So the advertising process is, uh, is done, it's very transparent, and they're trying to um, inform as many uh, people as possible. Uh, and then we are doing a short listing. Then we are uh, continuing the, 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 the selection process with standarding, evaluation, uh, and once we have a preferred bidders, uh, we negotiate and we finally 
uh, award the contract and we manage the, the contract. As I said before, this contract management is also an important part of the, of the project. So we have different types of uh, procurement method. The first one, the QCBS, is maybe the most popular one. So it's really the one we are using uh, most, of, most of the case. But voilà, just for you to know, we have also a different other type of, uh, of uh, selection uh, that we are using in order uh, to better adapt, as I said before, to the context. Uh, regarding firm recruitment, um, so we are advertising or uh, using our consultant management system. So we also uh, uh, publish the, the, the shortlist. We may request different type of proposal, full, simplified, or biodata, depending depending the case. And we may use uh, also standard bidding documents, uh, depending also the case, but with a, a focus on, on, on quality. Uh, we may have input-based TOR or output-based TOR, depending uh, the case, but output-based TOR it's really defining what the, the consultancy need to, to achieve, uh, while the other will be more time-based when in, in certain contracts, in certain contexts, it might be more appropriate, but um, output-based URL are more, more often used also. Um, contract can be, again, time-based or, or lump sum, meaning that uh, you can have hybrid, but uh, again, uh, it can be really uh, based on the, on the output, or that you want to achieve with, uh, with uh, a, a time that you have to estimate uh, and uh, it's, you will not be paid at the time spent but at the result. And uh, um, again, we are using uh, this uh, system for ADB TA service, but EA may use different uh, systems that you may want to, to, to understand and to, to register to. Uh, but usually, we'll try to, to inform and to, uh, to spread uh, the opportunity as much as possible, also on professional newspaper and any type of advertising. Um, so we have also uh, different uh, steps that you have to understand, member eligibility, debriefing, uh, ADB review. So member eligibility, as I said, it may vary depending on the type of financing. Debriefing, I know it's, it's a question, maybe we'll have some question on that, but either in individual consulting or for firms, uh, very often people want to understand uh, why they have not been selected. Uh, and it's very important to, to, to do this debriefing because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's important to, to improve for the next time. And ADB review, it's because we are also uh, reviewing uh, the, the way the, the, the opportunity is procured. Individual consultant recruitment, uh, again, uh, we are, we are starting with the same phase, so uh, developing TOR and budget, advertising, minimum of seven days, shortlisting, and then we rank uh, the CV, we select uh, the, 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 the three CV, we negotiate with the, with the first one, uh, and if it's uh, successful, um, then we can uh, start the, the, the contract phase. So we can also uh, come back on that later and answer some questions. Um, but I will maybe uh, say uh, on this that we have many um, uh, consulting opportunities for individual consultants, but it's very important. Uh, there is a lot of competition, as you can guess, and it's very important to fine tune as much as possible uh, and to make sure your expertise match well with the opportunity. So more and more, uh, we are looking for quality, we are looking for a, a really fit for purpose or a, a, a project and opportunities. So it means we are really looking for very specific experience and expertise uh, for the different opportunities. So we really invite you to really uh, make sure the opportunity uh, you target is in line with what you, what you can deliver. Okay, so the contract management phase, as I, uh, as I uh, explained, is, uh, is part of the, the process. So what are, um, again, general tips uh, that we, we can give? Um, so, uh, of course, uh, individual consulting opportunities are, are more and more uh, developed, so it's, it's important to, uh, to, to consider them. 
uh, know your clients and their expectations. So it's very important to spend some time to understand the full project concept um, and to add value to the TOR to show to uh, your client that you have well understood what the project is targeting and what you can bring to it. Uh, background and context of the, the project, as I just said. Also, understand what uh, you can bring to the project based on similar experience, similar expertise, uh, uh, similar uh, clients also, um, in similar context. It's, it's very important to bring this kind of, of expertise and it's appreciated. Of course, it's not the same if you have experience to develop project uh, in Nepal uh, or uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, for example, uh, or in, in the USA. It's not the same context, and so you have really to, uh, to put that in, in perspective. And identify partners, um, so it's also important. Not uh, you can, for example, for some project, acknowledge that you don't have the, the necessary experience, and in this case, uh, finding the good local partner, for example, can be key. We see that more and more uh, in the in the project uh, awards, in the in the firms or the consultants who are being awarded. We see that more and more that the association with local partner is very important. What is the cost of doing business? Also, is key. Uh, we had we have some example where the the implementation of the work was very complex, very complicated. Uh, because the tax were not well assessed. So you can imagine after all these efforts uh, to, to win and to get awarded a, a project, if you have not well calculated the tax and the opportunity is finally not worth, for, 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 not, not, not worth it for you to, to develop, uh, it's really a pity. So this phase of tax assessment is, is very key. Um, and also, um, yeah, uh, again, if external specialist, ex external expert can strengthen the team, it's also very important to acknowledge that and to start to try to partner with them. Ask questions. So again, maybe not everything is clear in the TOR. It's very important to, to ask questions and to be proactive uh, on that. Practically now, so what is the way to access to opportunities? Uh, so you can go to our website, so we have adb.org uh, uh, business center, and you can see here, uh, by clicking on it, you can see some uh, uh, project opportunities uh, ranked by uh, project and under operational procurement. And you can find some tips, so it means you can find uh, uh, more information if you have not understood well the, the ADB process. And you can really access uh, two different information as the procurement plan of the project, where you see really the detail of the, of the way the, the project will be procured, um, the pre-qualified contractors, for example, the contract which are awarded. So it means you can, for example, maybe contact them to ask them if they need any expertise uh, to develop the project uh, and the bidding procedure. So we really invite you to be proactive in consulting all these documents because the information is here. Uh, as transparently as, as possible, and you can really access uh, to it and use it uh, proactively uh, to develop your opportunities. So you may see here you have some procurement notice uh, where you can uh, see the, the project that has been awarded or that are being uh, developed and that are still uh, opportunities to which you, you can tender. Um, CMS, so we really invite you to register to CMS. It's free. Uh, I know some people ask if it's uh, pay on, if we need to pay or not. No, it's free. Um, and you can have uh, access to all the opportunities. And more importantly, um, you can select and play also with all the parameters and you can uh, get alerts. So it means that uh, you may uh, get, for example, you, you can see here, alerts for events, alerts for publication, safeguards, whatever. So it's very important uh, to use that because uh, on the, it means on the weekly basis you can receive alerts. We have also developed a page uh, for COVID-19, as I said before, so it means you can really, uh, depending your expertise, uh, access specific opportunities develop, uh, developed for, for COVID-19 uh, pandemic support uh, to the DMC countries um, and you 
it's not the majority of the opportunities, but you, you can really uh, select this, uh, this criteria. Um, also, and uh, this is uh, the, the final slide, but uh, uh, an important one, uh, we really invite you to discuss with us. Uh, so we are trying to, bon, we know that the online situation is not perfect, but we are trying to be as accessible as, as possible. Um, we rarely, we really never refuse uh, an opportunity to exchange with consultant as today. Uh, and uh, we thanks again, um, we thank again, uh, Yon and Development Ed for, for reaching us, but we are really trying to answer and to address all the concerns and questions possible. And we are very proactively um, uh, publishing on social media like uh, LinkedIn, for example. Uh, you can register to different consultant network, supplier network, uh, business center, and you can also be proactive and huh? you can send us a message. Um, Gerald, who is uh, connected here, who is uh, managing that, is very uh, reactive to, to reply. Um, so we really invite you to, to use these links and these contacts, especially in this online uh, context. Um, we are having very regular um, presentation and BOS presentation like this. And we are also developing um, more and more uh, technical focused presentation. Uh, for example, we had last week one on um, climate change and disaster management. I mean, how, how ADB is uh, trying uh, to address this issue in, uh, in Asia, uh, to support the MC country to uh, tackle the, the climate change uh, challenge. And uh, we will have another one soon in, in, in the coming weeks on, on other technical topics. So we really invite you to, to follow up, uh, to follow us and to exchange with us. I keep some time for the Q&A, so I will stop here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Stefan. Very interesting presentation, I must say. Uh, very comprehensive as well. Um, while you were speaking, we already had um, quite a number of good questions. Um, I will start asking them just in a few seconds. But before that, I want to mention uh, that you can find um, all the upcoming and current opportunities from um, from ADB, the, the grants or tenders uh, on development aid. So you can you can visit our website and and check out what tools we offer. Um, I bet that will be will be useful for your company and for you as a video consultant. So now we can move to Q and A session. Uh, the first question that I want to um, ask uh, comes from uh, Pela Pelagia or Pelagia. Uh, pardon me if I don't pronounce correctly. And she asks, can consultants from countries outside the partners countries participate in the procurement? as contractors or subcontractors? So, Rivian, can you repeat your question? I had sound, sound issue. Sure. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we have a, a, a question uh, from uh, Pelagia, Pelagia, which asks, can consultancies from countries outside the partner countries participate in the procurement as contractor or subcontractors? Alors, uh, yes, as I said, so regarding the eligibility, uh, so it's a question we are we are having often. Uh, it's um, it's uh, depending on the on the financing uh, of the of the uh, of the source of financing. So for uh, loans and grants, so eligibility eligibility depends on the source of financing. So there is uh, uh, if you are funded by ADB uh, ordinary capital resource. There is full ADB member uh, country eligibility. There may be a restricted ADB member country eligibility if it's funded by special funds. So you may have some restriction regarding the eligibility. Uh, and also we may have eligibility beyond uh, ADB member countries. So it's what we call universal procurement. Uh, and in this case, the bidder should refer to the issued RFP uh, for the list of eligible uh, countries. Um, so it means that um, uh, we have different cases depending the, 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 the financing source. Regarding, um, uh, th there is a, a case where, for example, you can have a firm that needs, if you, a firm is applying uh, to an opportunity, the firm needs to be from ADB member country. 
but this firm can hire individual outside ADB member companies. Okay. So this is um, the the distinction. So I hope it it is clear. But uh, voilà, as a nutshell, it's, uh, it's 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 possible for an individual consultant to be outside of her, of the ADB member countries. But if uh, he or she is coming under a, a firm who is from an ADB member country. Okay. Uh, I hope this answer uh, the question. Another question comes from Mirab, um, and, and it's as follows. So ADB uses sometimes time-based contracts conditioned for consulting services. Can this type of contract condition be negotiated? Uh, example for a lump sum. Um, alors, if I understand, if the question is can the, the type of, uh, of um, uh, type of remuneration between lump sum and time base, can it be negotiated? Uh, no, it's, it's really part of the. It's really it's really a. Um, um, uh, a data, a given data of the assignment, and uh, usually uh, will not, uh, we will not uh, ne negotiate that. Um, we may, uh, after, as I said before, um, initially we were using a lot of time-based uh, opportunities, and now our lump sum is more and more, uh, more and more developed. Personally, I, 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 I really like a lump sum contract because it's a uh, it's uh, it gives more flexibility and, and freedom also to, to the consultant, but it's a given or uh, given data of the of the assignment. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question comes from uh, Sylvia, and she asks if during the tender phase, um, is a company allowed to associate with other companies that were not part of the consortium? at the expression of interest stage. So let's say to add another company to the consortium after the expression of interest stage. Hello. Um, if it's um, uh, if, if there is a at the expression of interest stage, uh, you need to really uh, clearly explain uh, who will be um, who will be your partner and what will be the, the contract or the what will be the, the, the contractual organization? Uh, so if you change, uh, I mean, it's also part of the part of the shortlisting uh, criteria. So it means if you change this, uh, you have to you, you have to to start the, the process again. So it's not uh, I mean it's not recommended, and uh, usually it will not be uh, not, not be accepted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have next question is coming from Gabriel. So we have a question from Gabriel. Is there any way for a consulting firm to submit a project for financing to ADB um, in targeted countries via concept notes on or unsolicited proposals? Alors, again, uh, we, we are um, trying to be very uh, open to any uh, initiatives and uh, any uh, any uh, suggestion. Uh, but if I understand well the question, if it's a, um, a, a financing request um, from a, a consulting firm, it means that it will probably go to the private sector uh, part of ADB. So as I said before, we are giving two different, uh, two main type of supports. So one is for uh, countries. So we then discuss with governments uh, and institutions in order to develop uh, financial agreements at country level. Um, there may be also some, some sometimes uh, regional uh, re regional level loans. But uh, if you consider then uh, in the case you mentioned, uh, it will be more um, addressed to the private sector uh, of ADB. And in, in this case, yes, we are we are developing uh, loans. And, uh, and uh, giving different um, financing, uh, we have different financing mechanisms that we that we can uh, uh, discuss and award to uh, to companies uh, to develop projects. So, for example, uh, I don't know if you are a private company and you want to develop uh, uh, solar uh, solar energy uh, or sol solar panel energy uh, uh, project, uh, then you can uh, have uh, financing support from ADB 
uh, and you can negotiate a loan, for example, at a, a preferred interest rate in order to, to develop the project. Okay. Thank I you. hope it answers the, the question. Uh, but, but in any case, it's my own curiosity. So if a company um, outside the partner countries uh, that want to submit a proposal like that, um, uh, whom they contact, whom they have to get in, in touch to, to um, see if it's going to be possible. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's a uh, good um, um, specification to add. Uh, you have uh, in uh, ADB website, so you can find the, the name of the different uh, contact uh, a person for the different regional departments, for example. So you may want to reach uh, directly with the um, with the operational uh, person who is in charge of this uh, of this country, uh, and you will see. I mean, most of the time, our uh, project, of course, uh, they can be uh, busy sometime, and it, it may take few few days to re to reply according to the case. But they are quite reactive and open to um, uh, to, to suggestion and uh, and to proposals. So may, you may you may want to uh, contact them uh, this way. If not, uh, you can. Uh, bon, you have my contact here, for example. You can use my contact and uh, and send me the question, and I will forward it. And if not, you can also or uh, you can see on ADB website you have um, a contact email, uh, a generic contact email. Uh, it's uh, ADB inquiry. inquiry. And you can uh, you can send an email, and uh, we have a, a commitment uh, to reply to this uh, to this email and to give you the, the appropriate contact or, or answer. Um, as I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, it's it's something very important I want to uh, to to add. Um, I mean, I, as in all um, all the all the case where you want to develop contacts. Uh, you have to be a little bit patient and to take the time or for example if you are looking for a specific country or for a specific uh, context you need to take the time uh, to get to know um, the project officer to get to know the context or to make yourself or your technology known also so we have different way for that uh, for example you can present your, your technology or your approach uh, through a brown bag or blue bag that we are we are delivering in, in adb it was very popular uh, before the COVID. Of course, now we are doing it uh, online, but we, we had many, uh, many, many uh, companies or consultants uh, coming to present their, their, their solution or their opportunities. Um, we are really trying to attract uh, as much as possible all the ideas and, and innovations. So my, voilà, I know it's, sometimes it's not easy or you feel like you are, you are facing a big wall, but be a little bit my specific advice for that. It's be a little bit patient, try to identify some names and some specific uh, contact, and uh, you, you may get uh, you may get quite uh, quickly enough uh, some some good answers on that. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I think here we can we can um, ask the next question, which we received prior to this event. Um, it came from uh, Richard, um, and and Richard um, asked the following. So he said he is registered as a consultant with ADB. Um, he has submitted a number of AOIs for the website of ADB, uh, but uh, didn't receive any feedback. So he asks how the uh, the process uh, works, and um, he also asks if it's possible for him to maybe introduce, uh, present his experience um, via visit to ADB or maybe online call. Thank you. Alors, uh, it's a good, uh, good question. Thank you for uh, asking it. I mean, to, to share your, your, your concern openly. Um, on the opportunities, uh, so you, as you can imagine, uh, we have a, a certain number of applicants uh, for consulting opportunities. My experience, because I, I, I was, um, I, I had, and I, I'm still doing this uh, assessment every week when we hire an individual consultant is that you may have uh, certain uh, applicants who are not really targeting uh, some specific opportunities. So it means that if your CV, if you are just sending uh, because you're, uh, you, you are, I don't know, a consultant in one topic or, and you are uh, sending, or if it's not really well specified what to the opportunity, uh, it will not match. For, I'm giving an example. For example, I work in water. I mean, I worked in water before. It's not because you are a water expert that you will you will necessarily match with an opportunity where we are looking for an experienced uh, water operation and maintenance uh, person. 
So if you are, for example, experience in hydraulic modeling in water, you may not match with the uh, uh, opportunities which is regarding uh, operation and maintenance because it's two different things. So it's you have to be as specific as possible uh, in how you match with the opportunity. This being said, uh, you have also to be patient. Uh, it's not because you are you are not accepted once that you you will not accept it uh, the other time. So you may want to uh, to uh, revise that uh, and uh, to um, try that again. I mean. Or even few times, and trying uh, also to debrief. I think it's uh, it's because I don't know the specific case of Richard, but I think if he has applied to some uh, uh, opportunities, trying to get uh, in contact with the uh, uh, procurement person uh, or the project officer to debrief and to know okay why I was not selected uh, to the to the process. Again, it's a uh, it's a uh, very um, trans transparent process, and we are happy to give her uh, uh, feedback on on this uh, on this case. I hope I reply the, to the question. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, we have another question from. Um, apologies if I don't pronounce your name correctly. Cavan uh, Diono, Cavan Diono asks, how long is the typical duration to process an invoice claim to ADB? Thank you. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I don't have in mind the exact, um, I mean the, um, the duration which is set in stone in, in our process, but uh, I would say um, it's uh, usually once it's, um, if all the uh, administrative requirements are, are here and uh, if the claim is, uh, is, is, is well prepared uh, at the time where it should be prepared, uh, I would say it's quite, uh, quite timely on huh? that. Uh, I, uh, if you have a specific concern, you may uh, again you may contact the the, the procurement person. But um, we, we have some very. Uh, alors, just a few words about that. Um, our procurement system is is monitored. We have very uh, very uh, defined uh, indicators re regarding the the procurement process. So how the way we are answering to opportunities. Uh, the way we are uh, giving the answer where when people uh, are selected or not, and also uh, to pay the, the invoice of the of the consultant. But maybe after the meeting we can give the the exact uh, exact number of days. I don't have it in mind now. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, another question come question come from Katerina, and she asks if it is an obstacle uh, for an for a company to be from Europe. When he wants to pay, when he wants to bid for ADB projects, not at all, not at all. It's not an obstacle at all. Um, uh, but also, it's uh, it's it's good to uh, to ask this question if you were uh, if you were uh, ask it to yourself. Um, no, it's it's not an obstacle. I'm not. We are really committed uh, to get the expertise internationally from all ADB members um, and. Um, what is clear is that uh, um, it's important uh, to showcase uh, in your expertise and in your experience uh, what you can bring to the project and if you have worked in similar uh, condition. So uh, this is very defined in the way we evaluate the, the submission. So you have a country specific, country or regional specific experience, project uh, specific related experience. So it means that it's not because you don't have necessarily experience in the region that you will not get um, uh, the contract. But of course, as I said before, you have to show how your experience uh, can match with a specific context. If you have all your expertise uh, uh, in uh, developed areas, or I don't know, or in, uh, in one or uh, in the developed countries, and if you really apply for, for a low, um, low capacity and very challenging uh, uh, infrastructure context. You may want to show uh, what is your what is your experience in this field again. Huh? So, um, uh, but there is no at all uh, any um, regional uh, uh, pre-selection. Uh, so you mean either you are a European company or an Asian company or whatever. Uh, there is absolutely no no issue in the and no impact in the eligibility uh, criteria. Thank you, Stefan. We have another question from uh, Rohit, um, and the question is as follows. So does ISO certification play a role when IDB selects 
a, um, a possible company to work with. Thank you for the question. Um, alors, it can be, um, you, you, you may have some specific uh, criteria uh, requested in the, in, the, in the evaluation criteria. We, of course, uh, avoid uh, and uh, we cannot uh, use, uh, for example, patterns. Uh, we cannot uh, give a selection where, for example, we will recommend uh, to have uh, this type of equipment or, or, or this type of, uh, of certification exactly. So it means we may say, okay, we are recommend the company to get uh, this type of certification or equivalent. So again, uh, it's a little bit linked to the question before to the Europe, European company. We cannot restrict uh, the, 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 the procurement uh, too much to any, uh, any uh, certification or label. But we may want to refer that we uh, recommend the, I mean, we, we recommend the, the company to have a certification, for example, uh, ISO or equivalent, and we may give extra marks uh, for that since it's specified in the in the requirements. Um, voilà. So uh, it's uh, it can be uh, it can be uh, of course an, an advantage. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I must say that uh, the question um, keep coming. So. Seems like our audience is very um, active at this point. Another question that uh, we have come from uh, Chin, and I really want to address this one because it um, it comes from a representative of NGOs, which we didn't uh, really cover in the last um, uh, in the last questions. So um, the question is the follows: In which areas of work do you um, collaborate directly with NGOs? And if you do. Thank you. No, no. Alors, definitely, uh, the, the procurement uh, is uh, is regarding. Uh, so, of course, we very often speak of contractors, consultants, but we also address uh, NGO uh, and re other representative from the um, civil society. For example, um, bon, just to give you an example, I have in mind recently it was regarding a wash contract. So you know, for example, wash. Um, or you know what is wash contract? Is a uh, um, water and uh, sanitation and hygiene. Uh, projects or where we really need to work with the communities. So, for example, for this type of project, I have in mind some uh, recent consultancies uh, where we were looking for for uh, this kind of um, NGO support in our, in our, the Pacific. So it's it's for it's for example uh, an example where we um, where we are looking for NGO. Um, we may have also in the health sector. Uh, of course, there is more and more uh, request for, for for that in the social sector also, of course. Um, and we have also uh, a lot of projects which are having um, social impact and uh, social uh, safeguards to manage. Uh, so in this case, for example, uh, to, to, to uh, discuss and to uh, work with uh, the populations uh, which are impacted by the project, uh, we need also so, some NGOs. So we have uh, also some, uh, some specific uh, procurement process for that. But it's really uh, we are we are I mean we are hiring and partner, partnering also with uh, with NGO uh, re regularly. Thank you, Stefan. Um, Thank you. Looking for our next question to uh, to ask. So Sylvia asks, where can the source of funding be seen? It is mentioned in the documents issued for um, expression of interest. Thank you. Good question. Uh, alors, it's not necessarily in the in the TOR, of course, but you can find it in the in the project concept paper, for example. Uh, you can uh, you have uh, all the projects uh, since they are approved. Uh, alors, when when the project is at uh, is at um, loan approval, uh, you can see the, the concept paper on the ADB website. And if it's, for example, at TA stage where you are doing the technical assistance to, to develop the, the project, you can find also the source of fin financing of the technical assistance uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the ADB website. So it's really a, an official information uh, that, that, that you can access to. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, we will address a few more questions. Um because we're running out of time. Um, another question is from Rohit um, is as follows. So if an individual consultant has carried out consulting assignments remotely, 
can he claim to have experience in that country? <laughs> Good question. Uh, hello. Uh, of course, uh, we have. Um, I guess he's making reference to the um, maybe to the COVID uh, COVID uh, nineteen situation. Uh, of course, we, we had to, um, to to manage uh, the fact that people now are, are working more and more online. Um, but in my, alors, I, I don't want. It will really depend on the what is requested uh, in the in the assignment. But of course, if the assignment is re is requiring, for example, a field experience of working with communities or of uh, handling uh, civil works, um, uh, monitoring contracts on field. Of course, an online expertise uh, will not be uh, acceptable. If it's uh, uh, to deliver uh, online training uh, that don't re necessarily require uh, some uh, to, to have been exposed to the country uh, um, reality, then then it can probably be been, uh, but it will be uh, it, it it can be considered, but it will be really on on, on the case by case. Um, on that, just I take the opportunity to take a few words on this COVID-19 uh, context. We are also uh, we have adapted uh, a lot our our process in order to allow the project to go ahead. Uh, but it is really we are we are trying to facilitate as much as possible. But just to remind, it is also to the responsibility of the consultant or the firm uh, to make sure of all the constraints uh, that they will have to face when they travel in the country, including quarantine, or vaccination. And, uh, and any other expenses that may uh, that may occur. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, another question. Under QSBS procurement, how strict are eligibility criteria? For example, if the criteria states that an expert needs a master's degree but has extensive experience otherwise, would they still be considered? This asks uh, Will. Question from Will. Thank you. Uh, good question. Alors, very often I, I saw that almost all the time uh, you have master degree or equivalent in uh, in uh, as a field expertise or as a as a uh, as a work on site expertise. So very often you have this uh, this equivalence. You may have some some uh, some case where, where it's not the case, but honestly, 90% um, of the case, I saw that you have, you are giving the, the academic degree or the equivalent work experience. Okay. I'm just replying to Will. Okay. And we will cover one more question before we wrap up. Um, can um, so Lorraine asks if the firms can also register on CMS or is that only for individual consultants? No, no, the firm can re register also, of course. Okay. No, no, the the firm can register and you you you, you can get the. So, uh, the information as, a, as, a, as an individual consultant. So, uh, I think this will be the last question, which, will, uh, which comes from Andrew. And I do apologize to the questions that we didn't answer. Uh, we will do our best to answer them um, after this and probably we'll send you an email. Um, so, a question from Andrew. Um, is as follows. We have bid on some tenders for goods and sometimes a bank guarantee is required. Um, so this is very difficult. Okay. And he says it then is very difficult getting this released at the end of the tender process. Is there anything you can suggest? I'm not sure if you understood the question yeah. because so, you yeah, know it's a good question. Uh, I understand. Uh, so uh, they have a difficulty to get to get a bank guarantee from from the local bank uh, in the um, in the in the tender process. So in this, uh, as I said, uh, 
or maybe before in the presentation is we really invite you to partner uh, with local firms as i said it's really a trend we are seeing more and more uh, of uh, international firms partner, pa partnering with local firms especially in this covid 19 context so um, it may for example in this case i'm sure uh, facilitate the obtention of a, of, a, of a bank guarantee if you have already a, a good uh, a good local contact uh, also, uh, bon, we have to see again on, the, on, a, on a each case or what, what is applied, but maybe also uh, in the requirements you, you may have a bank guarantee or equivalent uh, or equivalent guarantee that can be bring, brought uh, more easily. So we have to check on, on the case by case, but um, usually if you, if you are already engaged in a project and you get the difficulties to, to, to get the bank guarantee, maybe you can also um, yeah, contact the, the, the people procurement person to see uh, if you can bring some some equivalent but of course if it's if it was not specified in the in the bidding document initially it may be uh, it may be complicated but uh, voilà partnering with local firms i will say is uh, is the best answer okay stefan thank you very much uh, once again before we wrap up i would like to thank St stefan and his team for helping organize this event and for guiding us on how to collaborate successfully with ADB. From my own perspective, I believe this was a very interesting event, very um, rich in, uh, in terms of information and guidance on how to be successful to collaborate uh, when collaborating with ADB. Uh, taking this opportunity, I also invite you to join us for our next event on doing business with Millennium uh, Challenge Corporation procurement guidelines and best practices that will take place on October 28th, so in two weeks. Jakey Naranjo, a supervisory contract specialist, and Mike McIntyre, director of program procurement, will tell us about MCC's profile, procurement uh, policy, portfolio, and also will share with us several tips for fruitful uh, collaborations. If you have any questions or suggestions for this or for future events, don't hesitate to send me a message and I'll be happy to connect. I look forward to welcome you to our next webinar. Thanks again and goodbye. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much, John. And if I may, one word, uh, we really are committed to give an uh, answer to all the questions. So I don't see uh, now the, the chat box, but uh, please send us all the questions or even the one before that uh, I, I, I replied, we can uh, give her uh, some more detail in, in writing. And uh, thank you very much for um, liaising and uh, attending. And we really expect that you will uh, uh, reply and try your, your, to, to, to win more uh, ADB opportunities in the, in the next future. We really need your expertise. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Yeah, I'll make sure to send you all the questions after this event, and you can take a look. Thanks again, thank and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.